Okay. Hello, everyone. This is the February 7th meeting of the Person and Family Engagement Work Group for VCSQI SAN 2.0. I'm Debbie Nadza Melnick, and um, we are recording this session. So today we wanted to review um, what the purpose of this work group will be, talk about the metrics a little bit, and what the requests for assistance are going forward. Um, I'm going to ask those of you who are on the call, which are two staff members from VCSQI and Janelle Cox from the Knoxville Comprehensive Breast Center at this point. Is there anything else that you think we should talk about other than maybe how we can encourage more people to be on the call? Maybe a different time would be better. Um, Janelle, as someone working in the field, do you have any thoughts on that? Should we pick a different time? We're trying to cross all time zones, which becomes a challenge. You might be on mute. Okay. Okay, so it looks like there's nothing else to really add. We'll, um, I'll do another kind of um, reach out to people to see if another time would be better. But um, in terms of the screen, bottom left is where you can mute, unmute, turn your video on or off. And then um, chat is over near the center of the screen. It, um, looks like you all know where that is though. Okay, so um, we put this work group together really to help everyone look at the PFE metrics and assessment. Um, oops, sorry, I made my screen too big here. Um, um, to review the metrics and the um, questions that are part of the practice assessment tool as they relate to person and family engagement. So specifically, the objectives of this work group is to review the practices, each practice's status on the six metrics and three assessment milestones. There's a little bit of overlap between the three and the six. Um, to review, understand, and adapt tools already available to help you um, improve person and family engagement activities in your practice, and to share resources and learn from each other, including sharing of stories both within the VCSQI group as well as across the national project. So by way of, any questions on that? Any need to clarify that? For those of you listening to this later, you can certainly send me an email if um, you'd like to suggest some other objectives. But while we're on this work group, I just also wanted to add that um, going forward, unless there is something specific that requires slides, um, I'd rather run this call as a meeting and not come across as a webinar because we really do want to engage people in discussion. So think of it as the meeting, the monthly meeting of the work group. And um, we'll pull up slides as necessary or if we think there's something that would be helpful for others to have as PowerPoint and, and share within your practice. Otherwise, um, you, you see this is a standard template we're gonna use, sets the agenda as well as then turns it into minutes. So um, we'll, we'll run these meetings accordingly. Um, if a practice makes a presentation to inform others about what they're doing, then of course, you know, they might have slides they wanna use. Okay, so just a quick review and discussion of last fall's initial survey results on the PFE practices. Um, we have definitely increased the number of practices since this survey, significantly increased it. So 15 responses um, was still um, a low response rate, but represents um, even fewer um, of our practices that are on board today. So there were 15 responses, um, some definite trends that indicate there's room for um, enhancing person and family engagement in most practices. Um, the highest scoring um, kind of yes um, answers were for um, the use of some kind of technology to communicate with patients, 40% of the 15 responders said they do that. And then further down, 40% say they promote patient-centric medication management. Then the numbers drop off. I should have put these in, uh, I guess, descending order. 
33% have a formal system for obtaining feedback from patients and can show how they've used it. So more than 33% actually seek feedback from their patients, but only 33% use that feedback to do something about their practice. Then you see 27% of practices said they do assess patient health literacy and 27% said they can demonstrate the practice of shared decision-making with patients. And 27% said, said they include patients on some type of committee. Now, were these the same practices for each of these three activities? I'm not sure, I didn't go to that level of analysis. And then we see only 13% assess the patient's level of activation, which really is why we, um, focused our first webinar on patient activation a couple weeks back. So another, a final question in this survey asked you all to um, you know, uh, check all that applied in terms of the, the topics you wanted more assistance with. 73% said patient-centric medication management, 53% assessment of patient activation, 47 with assessment of health literacy and 40% with shared decision making. So even though medication management was first, we went to patient activation for that webinar first since only 13% said they even assess it. Um, any comments from anyone on this, including Rick or Janelle or Jaina? Does it prompt any, any thoughts? Uh, not right now, Deb. Um, Janelle, we really don't use fall assessments. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that means related to falls. We weren't really asking about falls, but maybe um, I'm missing something in your comment in the chat box. <laughs> Typo, okay. It was an assessment back in the fall, so maybe. Uh, the agenda item topic uh, was confusing. Okay, so um, what we're thinking is that for these activities, um, and again, there's um, some redundancy between the three milestones on the practice assessment tool and the six metrics, specifically shared decision making, the use of an e tool, and including the patient's voice. Um, uh, um, yeah, including patient voice, which is like feedback. But we thought we would um, periodically repeat this survey of our participating practices. It will give the new ones since the first survey an opportunity to respond, as well as allow us to sort of track um, progress. So we may send this out um, again, just as a simple survey monkey link, um, or um, as you have your regular calls with um, Ivan, and um, uh, he may just ask you to answer them. So we'll probably do this again in March um, when people have had a chance to um, consider changes that they might be making. Um, I'm just typing this in the notes part. Um, so. In the back of the um, agenda, Appendix B, um, all related to these metrics, may be useful to everyone. Um, this is something that a, um, an affinity group that's part of the national project put together, describing the operational definition and guidance for each of the metrics. So you can see um, metric one asks whether there are policies, procedures, and actions taken to support patient and family participation in governance or operational decision-making committees. So this is the metric really that says, do you include patients on any committees? Do you have a patient or family on your board? Um, and so under this description of the metric then states the intent. Person and family advisors are well-prepared volunteers who can provide the patient perspective to all areas of the practice. Thought should be taken as to the structure and goals that will best fit the current practice culture. PFAs, those are person and family advisors, work in partnership with practice staff and should be considered part of the team. 
PFAs can be included on any practice committee or a person and family advisory council can be created. Even in small practices, it is best to not have just one token person and family advisor. The ideal is to have a fair representation of the population being served. So this is, I'm not gonna read through all of them, but I, I just want to um, uh, highlight this attachment and the additional description that it gives to each of the uh, six metrics. So the second one is shared decision-making. The third asks whether you um, assess and measure patient activation. The fourth just uh, focuses on the practice um, using an e-tool to communicate with patients. The fifth is health literacy. And the sixth has to do with um, supporting a patient's management of medications. So I would encourage you to take a look at these, to read them, to think about how this intent and how these activities might um, be considered by your practice. And we're gonna come back to each of these for um, probably focusing on um, one at a time for future meetings. To, today, I just wanna kind of give an overview to really get us going. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. The patient activation webinar we held uh, 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 back in January. Um, in the agenda and the minutes that will circulate are links to the YouTube of the recording as well as the slides. Um, there's very few listening on today's webinar live, work group uh, call live today. Um, but I'm wondering, um, about um, how those of you who did listen, and maybe Janelle, if you did, how you, what you took away from that webinar and whether or not it's helped the practice consider how patient activation might be um, better assessed and measured um, by your practitioners. Um, Okay, so it doesn't look like, Janelle, you were able to listen to this when it was live. So we're going to come back to patient activation also in terms of um, the discussion that was part of it related to um, um, interviewing and interviewing with purpose and intention, motivational interviewing. Um, motivational interviewing helps us understand what motivates the patient to change. And there is a a method to it. Um, one of our fellow support and alignment networks in the National Project, the American Psychological Association, has expertise in this area and has offered to um, uh, provide more information. That might be a webinar, that might be something else to our practices. So watch for more uh, coming to all of you on motivational interviewing and how it fits with um, patient activation, and how you might consider using it um, as a way to um, better understand where the patient is today with not only understanding what lifestyle changes might be necessary, but their willingness to change and make those changes. Again, the more willing, the more motivated they are, the more activated they likely will become or maybe already are. Is someone gonna say something? Okay. This could be a very short call today. Okay, so um, the next agenda item really is a reminder um, to go to the Healthcare Communities website. Um, if you've not yet registered on this, we encourage you to do so. The first link um, in this um, agenda item minutes is uh, uh, where you would go to register. Um, and then there are additional links once you're registered that you'll be able to access with um, helpful tools for person and family engagement. Um, there's an affinity group that you can join. There's also the compendium that we've talked about before that we um, have available on VCSQI's website as well. There are a ton of tools in this compendium as well as many other links within it um, that take you to um, other places where you can learn more about these metrics and um, 
milestones in the practice assessment tool. Um, actually, let me just call that up. I'll go to it. So, um, it's not clicking. There we go. So this will show up on the recording for people who want to take a look at it. So you can see I had to have logged in in order to get it. I will log in. And it's working. That first link though takes you to a place where you register. So here, you can see um, we are in the um, area of TCPI and affinity groups. There are several, and we're in person and family engagement. Lots of supplemental PFE materials here. Whoops, clicked on that affinity group and it is now working to take me probably to the home page of this affinity group. Um, but you'll see also when we get back to that page, there's a template. Um, here we go. So this is the home page for the PFE affinity group. And you can see there are articles, um, not only from um, other contracted organizations, but some show up for, uh, from practices as well. So if we click on this view all, uh, it's still loading. Um, every one of these affinity groups, just while we're looking at it, has a charter um, that describes what their purpose is. And then, um, you know, depending on the focus, there are lots of other links within it. I don't know why this is still loading. Here we go. So on the side here, you see... Um, Lots of different options. Uh, PFE story template. Resource library. And I believe it is in here where we can find the compendium. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little too fast here. Ah, it's downloading here. No, this is not the compendium, but it does relate to the practice assessment tool. Practice and the um, questions and milestones that are focused on that. Usually I can find that compendium pretty quickly. It's on the PFE website. It's on the BCSQI website under resources for PFE. As well. Right. I know it should be on here too. And for some reason, it is not showing up as named a compendium. Well, the best place to find the document itself then would be on our website, but I hope you can see here by me flipping through various links that there are um, many resources, and this is one of the reasons we encourage you to get on the healthcare community's um, website. Uh, that's the program overview. That's probably why. Here we go. So this is under resources, under PFE program 
overview, supplemental PFE program materials. So here is the compendium of tools and resources. And you see it's just downloading for me. It doesn't open from just by clicking it. You've got to download it. Okay. So um, here is where by component you can find websites, toolkits, guides, videos, articles. So it really is a gathering, a compendium of many resources for each of the six metrics as well as general ones. And more detail than, I guess that, that's just the table of contents here. But you can see when you get into the meat of the document, um, lots of uh, resources available. Okay. Um, I also wanted to bring to your attention because medication management was um, uh, ranked high as something people wanted more information about. Um, another um, support and alignment network, the Patient-Centered Primary Care Collaborative, I'm just gonna highlight it here on screen. Um, this is actually managed by the American College of Physicians. They have um, also put together many uh, tools for person and family engagement. So the general link to find those tools is this other PCPCC resources. But the one above it is a webinar um, that discusses medication management and e-tool use, as well as how to incorporate patient and family voice. It's a 60-minute recording um, um, that covers all three of those topics. A little bit of intro about the metrics in general, um, and then um, gets into a little bit more about those three metrics specifically. In the minutes, I'll put the, um, the time of the webinar, where it um, begins uh, talking about each of those three topics, so that if you want to jump to it, uh, you can. Any thoughts on this? For some reason, I've lost my view of my chat box. There we go. I'd like the webinar as it helped to understand this more. Okay. Thanks, Janelle. All right, well then our last really discussion item is the next meeting. And I guess I have some work to do to try and encourage um, more of our practices to send a representative. Um, but I'm thinking perhaps we should jump into um, either um, medication management or motivational interviewing since it related to um, um, the health activation webinar we already had. And I think um, our colleague from American Psychological Association, um, Dr. Chris Nettles, did say, as did Mary Minetti, the presenter, that patient activation and shared decision making actually go hand in hand. So motivational interviewing will actually help with two of those metrics to understand where the patient is as it relates to wanting to change and being involved. Um, any, any suggestions as to which topic might be best to proceed with? Medication management was high up there on um, the request list for more information. Okay, maybe I need to do a survey. Maybe, Janelle, maybe in our newsletter we can hit on this again and maybe a separate email to um, practice point people on this question will help us formulate uh, the agenda for next month. Um, is there something that is more for radiology? That's a good question, Janelle. Maybe we can think more about that. Um, which of these measures? I guess medication maybe is not, but um, maybe we can we can talk offline to see what what you're thinking and whether there's something specific we can uh, address with you for radiology. 
All right. Well, this was a short call, um, but that's all right um, for those who are listening uh, later. Um, we always welcome your comments directly. Um, I think you all have my phone number, my email, and um, we want to keep uh, being as helpful as we can to you. And if a better time is uh, um, necessary, then, then we'll change that as well. Rick, Jaina, anything you want to say as VCSQI staff people? Uh, no, Deb, thank you. I don't have anything to add, but I think as we get deeper into this, there will be a lot of value to this work group's activities. I think so too. We just got to rev it up more. Thanks, Janelle, for joining us. And um, maybe we can talk offline about um, some uh, specific applications for radiology. All right. Have a good day, everyone. You too, Deb. Thank you. Bye-bye.